show. I am your host, Jay Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the black community by promoting business ownership. If you are currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, We invite you to join us every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 220. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another informative and outstanding show in store for you. Today's show topic is not down, but not out. The importance of your belief system for entrepreneurs. Knocked down, but not out. The importance of your belief system for entrepreneurs. Before we get to today's episode, I just want to give you a few reminders. My new book is out, A New Black Wall Street. So if you're interested in building a successful, sustainable e-commerce business, please check out anewblackwallstreet.com. The book is $14.95 plus shipping and handling. And the complete title is A New Black Wall Street. Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. Now, if you need additional assistance building your business, I have a compatible online course titled Educated E-Commerce, which you can find at educatedecommerce.com. You can enroll in that course if you need additional assistance. Now, here's the trinity. So any of you producers of product that want to sell product from black producers to black consumers, I've created a platform Title BeSmartByBlack.com. BeSmartByBlack.com. So anybody who has a product that you've produced and you want to sell and start circulating this, this black dollar worldwide, that's what it's all about. Go and upload your product to BeSmartByBlack.com. It's free. And that way we're going to start really promoting it and marketing it. And that way you'll be able to help circulate dollars in the black community worldwide. So that's BeSmartByBlack.com. Now, uh, before we get to today's show, I just want to thank everybody that attended the webinar last night. So it was a great webinar, went about an hour and a half, and I got some great questions. So I just want to thank everybody from the BEB family that spent their time, uh, shared their time with me last night from 7 to around 8.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we had a good time and got some good information out there. So um, I'm not going to be replaying the webinar, but I'm going to be doing another one. It's actually the same webinar, but I'm actually going to add a couple of things in there and extract some other things. So uh, just keep an ear out for it. I'll let you guys know when I'm going to do the next webinar. Now, I want to get to today's show titled Knock Down But Not Out, The Importance of Your Belief System for Entrepreneurs. And guys, today the show is going to be a little bit different. Normally, I give you actionable steps I talk about a specific product or service or type of business or something that can help further your business. But I talk from the heart every week, but I really want to talk from the heart today. Um, I had a conversation last night after the webinar uh, with a brother, and uh, it really touched me personally. He's been going through some uh, financial uh, distress. Uh, He's married, has a couple of children, and he was almost in tears as we talked. And uh, I can definitely understand that. Been there, (laughs) done that. And so it really touched me. And so we just started talking and I shared some of my story with him uh, because he hadn't heard all of my story. But I shared some of my story with him and I told him that, man, you got to you got to keep pushing through. Each situation is different. There's dynamics uh, that are different in different families. And so I said, you just got to keep pushing through because. Your wife wants the same thing that you want. You just are looking at it, getting it to it in different ways. You think entrepreneurship is the way and she's telling you to go get a job. So basically what happened was um, he was adamant about, you know, being an entrepreneur. He started his business. The business failed. And now his wife is adamant about him getting a job. 
And so he hasn't been able to find a job yet. So he's starting to work on this new business and she's not having it, (laughs) you know, and I can understand both views. Like I said, been there, done that. And so many times we want security from my perspective. When I was going through the situation, my wife just wanted security. She was like, dude, I really don't care what you do. Um, You know, as long as it's legal, obviously, and I wasn't (laughs) going to blur those lines. She said, you know, I just need that security. So I get that and I understand that. But my thought process was if I can find a way that I can give you that security and do something that I'm passionate about or something that I love, then let's see if we can make that work. But obviously it didn't go that smoothly. And I'm actually going to tell you about a story today uh, that I don't think I shared it on air, but I shared it last night with a brother I was talking to. And um, it was probably one of the lowest points of my life in terms of entrepreneurship. Now, I've had a lot of ups and downs, just, you know, that's called life. Deaths, you know, loss of family members, losing my son at 17 months old. I'm not going to count that because that's that's something totally different. That's personal. But on a business note, I want to talk about probably the lowest moment or instance in my life. And so if you guys can just bear with me today, I'm not going to give you actionable steps. I'm speaking from the heart and hopefully I can touch somebody that may be going through this or has gone through this or may eventually go through this because entrepreneurship is tough. We all know that it's not something that you start at zero and you go straight to a hundred. So when my mortgage business finally collapsed and I think this was actually the day that I realized it was really over. Um, We had a nice 10, 11 year run uh, with the company. My two business partners are my two best friends. They're like my brothers and we were employing 40 to 50, you know, black folk in the city of Philadelphia, making money, showing people the business, giving people opportunities that they probably wouldn't have gotten at other companies. And so we were real proud about what we were doing, trying to, you know, make, you know, do business, make money and and bring whoever we could along that was hungry and willing to work. So. What happened was with the crash in 2007, 2008, my partners and I um, were trying to hold on to the business. Uh, We had dumped in over $100,000 a piece trying to keep the the business afloat with payroll, rent, and the whole shebang. So any of you guys who've heard this before, I apologize, but in case people are hearing this for the first time. So we were like, man, what are we going to do? You know, we we got a family here at, at the office. People are counting on us. They have families for their livelihood. So you have that stress. Then when you go home and you're looking at the stack of bills, you're like, man, I got that stress too. And so it finally got to the point where um, my partners and I were like, look, we're going to have to do something because I can't even hold out at home. I'm, I'm falling behind on bills, the mortgage, car notes. Everything was like falling down on us, coming down at us hard because at that time of the collapse, we couldn't get any loans closed. And so as a mortgage broker, the way you make money is you got to close loans. So when the credit was getting tight and you had people with real good credit that started to get denied because the banks didn't want to lend anymore, that basically turned off that siphon. So we were, we were dripping. It was like a spigot, a fire hose that you know went from that type of blast down to drip drop to basically to nothing. So we're paying people, you know, payroll, rent and all that stuff. And it was down. We we let most of our employees go, which was very hard for us because they're like family. But we gave them a heads up, though. We were straight up. We were like, look, in about four to six weeks, we're going to shut this thing down. And, you know, we're letting you know now we'll pay you. You don't have to come to work. So you'll have time to find a job. Now, we didn't have to do that. But I owed them at least that because. My, my family was in there and, and we were all getting it working hard for the, the common cause. And so um, I was behind on my mortgage and I was about to go into foreclosure. And so I had this loan. I was working with a referral. And if I would have closed this loan, I would have made like fourteen fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on this one loan. And so I'm working on a loan. It was a kind of tricky loan. And it was going back and forth. And I was working in conjunction with the realtor because the young couple was actually buying their house. Now, 
once again, as things started tightening, the process to get a loan closing, it, it was taking longer. They start, you know, rechecking, double checking stuff and all of that. So the realtor who also doesn't get paid until the house gets sold was on my butt like, yo, what's going on? I'm like, look, we're pushing through. We're pushing through. And so finally, she was like, OK, they're supposed to close in three days and we don't have the clear to close yet. So the bank that I was working with trying to get this loan closed was BSing around. And she was telling me she was like, well, I work at, you know, uh, I have a sister that's in the mortgage business. And she said she can close this loan in three days. And I'm like, that's that's impossible. I don't care who you are. You're not closing the loan that you just getting the documents on in three days, especially not at that point in time. Long story short, the next day, you know, she's bugging me. The, uh, the the buyers of the house are bugging me, who are my clients too. And I said, man, I'm, I'm stressed to the gills. And I ended up going to the park at lunchtime just to decompress. So I went to this park in, my, in, in Germantown by my old neighborhood. And I just sat there and I was like, man, this, this, is, this is crazy. I don't know what's going to happen. So the realtor calls me up and she tells me, well, I just talked to the clients and they want to go with my mortgage person because she can get the loan closed. Now, everything I had <laughs> was riding on this loan, right? Now, the $12,000 or $15,000 was not going to get me totally out of the hole, but it was going to give me a nice start, you know? And so the clients call me and I'm talking to them, nice young couple. And they're like, yo, Jay, we appreciate everything you're doing. But the realtor says that, you know, her people can get the loan closed in three days. We want to make sure we move on time. And I said, I understand. I said, but I'm going to tell you right now, nobody's going to be able to close that loan in three days. Now, I'm just going to fast forward. That never happened. But they took the loan away from me anyway and went with the realtor's uh, uh, loan officer. And so I'm sitting there and that was kind of like my last hope. I'm like, man, I don't have anything else in the pipeline. We got all these bills at the office. We need to close out. My partners don't have any loans closing. Uh, The employees got to get paid. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, (laughs) there was a little lake over there. And this lake is probably only three feet deep. But I was like, man, if this thing was any deeper, I might go in there and, and drown myself and put myself out of my sorrows. That's literally, I, you think I'm joking. I literally thought about it. I'm like, yo, I'm worth more dead than I am alive right now. And so all of this is weighing on me. And I just sat there and I'm like, I I literally don't know what to do. I, I literally wanted to cry. I physically, emotionally, I just wanted to cry because that was my last shot to keep everything together. So I thought. And so my, one of my, uh, my boys calls me, yo, man, what you doing? I said, man, I couldn't even, (laughs) I couldn't even talk. I was like, I ain't good because I'm not good, man. I said, he was like, yo, what's up? Where you at? I said, man, I'm in the park. He's like, you in the park, man? He said, what you feeding the pigeons? But literally that's probably what I would have been doing in the next couple of days. right? And I'm like, bruh, I said, I just, I got to decompress, man. He said, man, where you at? Hold on. I'm going to be there. And he hung up. I was going to tell him don't come, but he hung up on me. I was like, man, I don't even care. You can come or whatever. And I'm sitting there and I'm just thinking about um, what I'm going to say to my wife because uh, she knew the situation was dire. Um, you know, how am I going to get out of this? And I was really to the point where you talking about depressed. I was like, man, I ain't never felt like this before. So. My boy comes, then one of my other, his brother, my other boy come. I didn't know he was coming. And they sat down. He's like, yo, man, <laughs> we in the same boat. Because one of them was my business partner. He was like, yo, man, we in the same boat. But he had a little, he had some additional monies that his, his parents had given him. So he was okay. And he was like, yo, man, it's going to be all right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking that. But I still got to go home and I got to deal with all these issues And that was like the last straw with the mortgage business. After that, pretty much it was done. I was like, yo, let's let's shut this thing down, close it on out. And I got to figure out what's going on. And so at that point, I had no hope. Literally, I felt like I had no hope. There's always hope. As long as you're in the game, there's hope. 
but I felt like I literally had no hope. I had no sources of income because I didn't diversify. At the time, I focused everything on that mortgage business and there were opportunities that I had starting to remax dealership, doing other things. I was flipping a couple of houses here and there, but nothing at that time because things got tight. So I felt I felt alone. I felt uh, I was nervous. Uh, I didn't know where to go next. And I remember just sitting there talking to my boys and I'm like, fellas, I, I don't know. I said my parent, my, my family would be better off if I'm dead with my insurance money and and not that I was going to kill myself, but I'm like, damn, I've done all of this. My, my belief system was that I'm going to be able to, to build this business or build a business that's going to be able to take care of my family. And I'm sitting here scratching my behind with pretty much lint in my pockets, not knowing where my next step was. And so I was explaining this to the young brother last night. And he was like, oh, man, he said, you know, I, I know what you feel like. I'm like, yeah, bro, I've been there. So when I talk about that stuff on, you know, on the podcast or when I'm doing my, my talks or my, my uh, speeches and stuff, it's real. So I understand how that that can affect you. So, you know, I've seen the highs and I've seen the lows and I, I'll be damned. That was a low right there. <laughs> so I can laugh about it now. But I'm telling you, all at that point in time. It was nothing to laugh at. I really, literally, I, I don't really cry. The only time, only cry for love. I don't cry for pain, right? That was a Prince lyric, but th- that's true. So when I'm hurting like that, I'm, I'm not going to cry, but I was real low. You know, I was real low. So I had to go back home. I sat down. I talked to my wife. She starts crying. And I'm like, oh my God, that just even makes the, the depression even worse because now I'm, my wife is hurting and I can't stand to see my, my wife or my daughters, you know, anybody, any family member hurting like that. So she's stressed out and I'm like, you know what? I don't know what I got to do, but what I had to do after I kind of vegetated for about two days, trying to think about things and how I could come back up and, and what was the next move. I had to sit there. I had to ask myself the most important question I ever had to pose to myself and that was why do I believe what I believe why do I believe what I believe because all my beliefs had been tested they had been tested to the max I believe that being successful is easier for me as an entrepreneur I believe that I can take care of my family better by being an entrepreneur I believe that if I work hard, I, I keep studying, I keep learning, learning from my mistakes as an entrepreneur, everything will get better. And I had to ask myself, why did I believe what I believe? And see, your beliefs are just thoughts that you keep thinking. And your beliefs drive everything in your life positive and negative. So whatever your belief system is, it's, it's critical to your success or your failure. And I had to really ask myself, maybe I bit off more than I can chew. Maybe I'm smelling myself. Maybe all of this was luck. <laughs> you know, I was thinking all kinds of stuff. I'm like, well, you know, maybe I didn't deserve that type of success. And so I really had to dig deep because mentally I was I was damn near broken. I'm telling you, I, I just as a man, as a as a protector, as a provider, and having gone from such, you know, great heights in relative terms, anyway, such great heights to have it all come crashing down. And I have my wife looking at me and she said, and that's my fault. And so when I'm dealing with all of this, I really had to reexamine my belief system. And I said, you know what? Maybe I knew, knew, do need to go get a job. You know, maybe I can't do this. Maybe all those people that said that stuff were right. So I really had to think back and, and really go and do some introspection and understand, did I need to readjust my belief system? So I had to start thinking what and who influenced and influence and influences your belief system. Think about this. What? And who influenced, past tense, and influences 
your belief system? Is it family? Is it friends? Is it coworkers? Is it mentors or whatever? So certain families have certain belief systems and I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about God, Allah, Buddha, uh, the creator or whoever. I'm just talking about things that you believe in, not, not religion, but people, instances, experiences, they all influence our belief system. So if I started out in business as an entrepreneur and I went straight from zero to the top, that, you know, my belief system is, oh, it's, it's, this is how it normally is. So you really have to think what and who influenced your belief systems. Now, have the influences been positive or negative? And I was telling the brother that I was talking about, uh, talking to last night that I've had so many negative influences in my entrepreneurial journey from my wife, from my in-laws, from uh, my my siblings, uh, friends, family. I mean, all, everybody kept telling me, yo, dude, why do you think you can do that? But my internal belief system was always that I'm going to bet on myself before I'm betting on anybody else. And what you say to me has no bearing whatsoever on my success or failure. Now, I say that, but it, but in truth, it actually does. You know, the power of the tongue to speak life or death. So if you keep hearing negative things about what you're trying to do, it will affect you. And so I even had to tell my wife, I'm like, look, babe, you know, I'm going to have to mentally put you in the corner over here, right? Because I can't have you you know, these negative thoughts and this negative energy around me. I'm already struggling. So I need positivity. And if you can't give me that, then you're going to have to stay over there so I can do what I need to do. So back to the story. Um, so I'm, I'm laying around the house two days, not physically laying around, but just mentally moping around, figuring out how I'm going to get out of what I'm getting, you know, what I'm in. And so finally I said, you know what? I have to reconstruct my set of beliefs. I have to double down on my set of beliefs. You see, me as a serial entrepreneur, it's very hard for me to go back into corporate and earn the money that I'm accustomed to earning because I've been out of the corporate structure for so long. So really, my only option is to double down, balls to the wall, and go get this. All right? We going to ball or we going to fall? So... I said, you know what, I'm going to focus and I'm going to center myself with people that support my belief system. I don't care who you were. I stopped talking to my sister for a long time. I don't even want to talk to you. Not that we didn't talk, but we didn't talk about anything substantial. It was like, nah, I, I, I can't do this. My family's well-being is more important than anything else. I'm not going to hurt anybody, but... If you ain't saying nothing positive, I don't even want to hear it. You know, so don't even think it when you're around me. So I had to shut it down and I had to really reconstruct my belief system. And that really is the only thing that helped me dig out. Now, I know the question is, yo, how'd you dig out? <laughs> and that's what the brother asked me last night. And I said, little by little. So I started doing some some contract work, some consulting um, I actually even did do a couple more loans after that um, because I've been, been in the business so long, people were still coming to me and I would refer business out and stuff like that. So I slowly, slowly started rebuilding, uh, but I had to set the expectation level. And that's what I told a young brother, you know, you didn't get in this situation overnight and you probably aren't going to be able to fix it overnight. So your belief system is paramount to your success, entrepreneurs. Don't ever forget that. So here's a couple of things. So you want to formulate your own belief system and find out what and who that supports your system. What supports your belief system? Okay. Who supports your belief system? So once you formulate your belief system, and it could be anything, right? Whatever it is, find things instances, people, whatever, to support that because you're going to need that as an entrepreneur because this is a lonely job, man. It's a lonely place to be. 
If people don't get you, don't understand what you're doing or trying to do, it can be very lonely. All right. Remember also your your belief system is internal. There's no right or wrong system. Remember that what you believe is what you believe. What Jay believes is what he believes. And, you know, I don't care what you say. This is internal. This is something that I believe. So you need to make sure that, you know, you don't it's no right or wrong. All right. And when you have doubts or fears, reach out to someone that understands and supports your belief system. One of the things that really got to me um, that same day that after I finally left the park, when I decided not to drown myself in three feet of water uh, (laughs) was I'm driving home and my cousin, who's like my brother, uh, basically we could finish each other's sentences. We grew up together. We're a year apart in age. And and he's he's my brother. He is my brother. You know, my our moms are sisters. And he called me and he was like, Yo, dude, what's going on, man? And normally he doesn't call me during that time. And I was like, cousin, I said, damn boy, you must have known I needed you. And he said, Man, what you talking about? And we just started talking and I could just I could just tell him what was going on. And he was like, bruh, what's up, man? You you need a loan? And I was like, you know what? I said, not right now. I said, I'm good right now. I said, I'm, let me try to figure this out. But what he gave me was the comfort in saying, yo, man, if you need something, reach out to me. And what I love about people that really support you, they're not going to put you through the ring. And they're not going to ask you, yo, man, well, why why'd you do that? Why you screw up like that? Damn, yeah, I, I give you the money. I'll loan you some money. But damn, it's no judgment with us. Things that he's done, man, look, hey, how can I help? And that's basically what he was saying. And it's so great to have somebody in your corner that's not going to judge you. The things that you've done, uh, decisions that you've made. And that's always going to support you and have your back. It's priceless, man. And so when he told me that, I was like, all right, I got I, I got a safety net if I need it. Now, I didn't have to use it, thank goodness. But I knew I'd be like, yo, cuz, man, I need you to drop whatever on me. And it would have been a matter of what's your bank account, routing number and account number. And it would have been just like that. So. The way I got out of it, I just dug out, but I really had to hone in and really reconstruct my belief system and really double down because you need to do what the creator put you here to do. And when you can do that, family, I'm telling you, when you know you're living in your genius, living in your purpose, things will change for you. And the problem with this, with us right now is A lot of us aren't living in our genius or our purpose because our belief system may be skewed. And once again, it's not that it's wrong or right. But my belief system was that if I knew how to find a way to take better care of my family as opposed to working in corporate America, why the hell wouldn't I do it? So that's what I do. And guess what? It worked. Then it didn't work, then it worked, then it didn't work, and then it worked. But it was all about my belief system and believing in myself, believing in what I was doing, and looking at the big picture. So it's not all about the money. Like I said, you do what you're supposed to do in life, the money is going to come with it. You'll take it, that'll be taken care of. So you want to make sure that your belief system is on point. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, and you're working in corporate America, you're going to have to reconstruct your belief system. You're going to have to reconstruct it where it makes more sense for you or your belief system supports the fact that you, trailblazing out there on your own, is a better option, not necessarily short-term, but long-term for yourself and your family or and or your family. So you need to reconstruct your belief system. Okay? If it's if it's if it's twisted, because we all know internally what we should be doing. And I think it's called like a a point of enlightenment. 
And once that light bulb goes off and you understand that, you know what? I'm not supposed to be sitting here at this job. I'm supposed to be out helping children. I'm supposed to be leading a company. I'm supposed to be working with senior citizens. I'm supposed to be doing whatever it is. When that point of enlightening enlightenment hits a, a family, there's no more excuses. It's there. You've been enlightened, meaning you understand that you're supposed to be doing something else, but you're just doing what you're doing because who knows why you're doing it. Maybe obviously obligations, money or whatever. But when that point of enlightenment hits, there's no more excuses. And that may take you to reconstruct your belief system. And so that was probably my lowest point. Uh, and literally, like I said, I was sitting there, <laughs> sitting in the park around this little lake, just figuring out, man, I, I don't even know what to do. And yeah, it did cross my mind. And, and I, I kind of chuckled to myself. I'm like, boy, if, if they found me in three feet of water, man, that'd be kind of crazy. But uh, now nah, I wasn't going to do it, but I'm like, oh my goodness. I got, I got a kind of strange sense of humor sometimes. But I'm like, my boy was like, yeah, man, we ain't want to find you in three feet of water drown. What are we going to tell your wife? I was like, yeah, yeah me too. So, <laughs> but that was something that um, I expressed and I shared with the brother last night. And I was just telling him, I said, man, it's, it's going to get better. I said, now, everybody's situation is different. Everybody's relationship is different. So um, I said, you need to do what you need to do to take care of your home and your wife. And, you know, your children. And if that means you got to go back and get a job for a minute to appease her and to take care of everything, then that's what you got to do. I've done that before, you know, and I I came back out, went back in again, came back out. I did it. I did it twice. And I I figured I wasn't going to do it after that. God willing. And so but the brother hit he had some heartstrings, man, because I could feel the pain. Um in his voice and he was completely transparent and honest and I appreciated that. And so I just wanted to share with him, um, you know, the story I just shared with you guys. Uh, like I said, because it's not easy and this, this is a little different type of episode. And I know normally, like I said, I do actionable steps and stuff like that, but sometime, you know, I can't motivate you. You know, if I got to motivate you, that means that, you not really motivated yourself. Maybe inspire, um, give you some guidance, give you some uh, a look behind the curtain that what can happen and what can happen once you come out of things. But this this podcast isn't here to motivate you. You need to have that on your own. So if you playing football, some people are just like killers. I used to play with a with a dude, man. He was like a tackling machine. You didn't have to motivate him. He was self motivated. The people that you have to keep priding all the time, oh man, come on, dude. They're going to fall back into their nature. Whatever their natural state is, they're going to fall back into that. So if you're not self motivated, nothing is going to really motivate you. This may inspire you, and there's a difference. But motivation, you got to have that on your own. And this young brother, and I asked him that, he was like, yeah, I'm motivated. I said, well, you're going to get there. It's not going to happen overnight, but you're going to get there. Be strategic. And once again, make sure your belief system is intact and you support that belief system with the right people and the right things. So I always tell you guys, if there's a mentor that you need to reach out to, reach out to a mentor in your in your in your field. They've gone through what you've already which what you're looking to go through. They've already gone through. They could be 20 steps ahead of you. They understand the process, you know, meet up groups for entrepreneurs, just People that support you in everything you do. That's who you need to align yourself with. And that's who you let need to let know what, what your belief system is. Yo, cuz, this is what I believe, man. And I told my cousin that. I said, man, this is what I believe. He was like, well, why do you keep doing this? I said, because this is what I believe. He said, okay, I got you. I understand. And so it wasn't a thing when he was like, dude, if you need some money, let me know. He didn't judge me because he knew what my belief system was and he supported it. Okay. And so that's what you guys need to do. Sometimes your belief system may need reconstructing, but 
even though you get knocked down, as long as you're not out, you can get back up. So we know as entrepreneurs, it's tough. We know that there's challenges that we face every day, especially there's some intrinsic challenges as a black entrepreneur, man and woman. And we know that it's not easy. We're blazing our own trail. If you really think about it, what's more exciting than that? What's more exciting than being able to get up and determine what's going to happen today or what effort you're going to put in today? Where are you going to put that effort in today? What's going to happen when you put that effort in? And then when you look back two, four, six, ten years behind you, you're like, man, I started this thing from nothing. Ground zero. <laughs> like I said, like the podcast, September 2014, or end of August 2014, I think was my first episode. And I had 178 listeners. And that wasn't at immediately, that was after a couple of months. But I think the day that I did my podcast, I had about 12 or 14 listeners, which were pretty much family member and friends that just tuned in to download. They probably ain't even listened to all of it because they were like, all right, whatever, dude, what you doing now? But in retrospect, that was a foundation. My, my wife, she was like, what are you doing? Why are you recording all of this stuff all the time? You know, now look at it. It's it's a platform. Uh, it's something that I love. I'm able to share my stories, you know, with the BEB family and hopefully I can inspire somebody. And so anybody that's going through something tough right now as an entrepreneur, financially or whatever, hang in there. Make sure that you stay focused. And I know it's hard sometimes because, you know, we got we got needs. We need money. We got to make sure bills are paid. And And really, that's where the trick is. If you can navigate that. You're going to be all right, but just focus, stay the line, toe the line, and it's going to get better. The easiest thing anybody can do, and I used to tell my kids this, is quit because it takes absolutely no effort whatsoever to quit. So that's the easiest thing that anybody can do. Now, sometimes you got to you got to reset. Like I said, I went back into corporate for a minute, figured, realized again that why am I here? Went back out. Business didn't do that well. Hung out for about three years in another business. Came back to corporate for a minute. Then I came out again for for the for the last time. But sometimes you got to reset. And that's what I told a brother. So even if you have to go get a job, try to find something that's going to augment whatever you were trying to do. Try to find something that was in that industry because you can learn things. And this way you don't have the pressure of having to produce when you're getting a paycheck, it's a trade-off. We all know that. You know, you do your own thing, you're in control. You get a paycheck from somebody else, they're in control. So that's today's episode, guys. Like I said, it's a, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different, but it's knocked down but not out. The importance of your belief system for entrepreneurs. And once again, sometimes we may have to reconstruct our belief system. And there's nothing, there's no such thing as a wrong or right belief system. You're going to believe what you're going to believe. And that's normally shaped by people and uh, circumstances, people, circumstances, and things that have happened to you. So um, my dad, I I told the story before, he was a successful business person uh, for many years and then fell off and uh, things happened in his business. And basically he lost it all and he never got back on that proverbial horse. And one of the things that he told me before he died was like, man, I wish I would have went back and and continued to try to restart my business. And he lived with that for the rest of his life until he died. And so you don't ever want to have regrets per se. Now, you got to do things in a timely fashion. But if you know you were created to do something, find out a way to do it, man. Go out there and do it. Figure out a way. If nobody's going to give you the way, create the way. All right. So you got to figure that out. But once again, the importance of your belief system for entrepreneurs, knocked down, but not knocked out. Uh, Before we close out, guys, uh, this month, this is actually going to air in October. But uh, the month of September 2018, man, broke records. Another record month of downloads. And once again, family, I 
I attribute that all to you guys. Please continue to spread the word about the podcast and the blog. Um, if you need to connect with me, Jay Jones at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint dot com, Facebook Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, Twitter J Jones zero zero one, Instagram J Jones for real the number four R E A L, YouTube. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, and to be on the B E B text line for special notifications and reminders. Text B E B to five five five. 888 BEB to 555 888. Love you guys. See the same time next week. Peace.